Welcome! For several years now I've put out a calendar of astronomical events for the upcoming year. And here goes for 2016. It's going to be a particularly busy year because we have a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. We have a transit of Mercury and two solar eclipses. So get your calendars out and start marking out the dates that interest you. We start off on January 2nd with the Earth's closest approach to the Sun. At that time it is just 91.5 million miles away from the Sun or 147 million kilometers. That is because the Earth's orbit is not a circle but an ellipse and on that date the Earth is at its closest approach to the Sun. Now because we are closer to the Sun we're actually getting more energy from it. So if you're in the northern hemisphere on those cold winter days just think you're getting a little bit more extra heat from the Sun as a result of where we are in the orbit. And similarly in the southern hemisphere you deserve to go to the beach for a little while uh, to offset this extra summer heat. On the 9th of January 3rd and 4th we have the quadrated meteor shower. You can get up to 40 meteors per hour so this is quite an active shower. Its radiant point is located just above the handle of the Big Dipper. The meteors are best seen after midnight and they are believed to be coming from the debris of a rather unromantically named comet 2003 EH1. The problem is, is that the moon is in its last quarter at that time and so will mask some of the fainter meteors. On the night of March the 8th Jupiter will be at opposition which means it is at its closest approach to the Earth. So the planet will be at its biggest and brightest. It will be directly south at midnight and it will be the bright star that isn't twinkling. Planets don't twinkle. This is your best chance to see its belts and the Galilean moons. On March 9th we have a total eclipse of the Sun. Totality will last for about 4 minutes and 9 seconds at maximum. It will be visible over the Pacific. The two main land masses that it crosses are Sumatra and Borneo. The eclipse will be partial in Southeast Asia, Eastern Australia and Hawaii. On the 23rd of March we have a lunar eclipse. It's only going to be a penumbra eclipse unfortunately. It will be visible in Asia, Australia, Antarctica and most of North and South America. Now you'll notice often that a solar eclipse will be followed by a lunar eclipse or vice versa. That's because the moon is near the ecliptic plane and so consequently it increases the chances of both solar and lunar eclipses happening. On the 22nd of April we have the Lyrid meteor shower. You can get up to 20 meteors per hour from this particular event and is best seen a few hours before dawn and the radiant point is just near the bright star Vega. It is caused by the debris from comet Thatcher. Unfortunately the moon is going to be full so you may as well forget about this particular shower. On the 6th of May we have the Eta Aquarid meteor shower. You can get 20 to 40 meteors per hour from this shower. It's best seen from the southern hemisphere because its radiant point is near Eta Aquarius. It is caused by debris from Halley's Comet and the moon is very favorable. It's a new moon so this will be good observing conditions to see the meteors, even the fainter ones. On the 9th of May we have what is I think the highlight of the year which is one of the rare transits of Mercury across the face of the Sun. It will take 7 hours to cross the solar disk. It is going to be visible from most places on Earth except for Eastern Asia. It will transit from the northeast limb of the Sun across to the southwest limb of the Sun. It is going to be relatively small so it's hard to see You'll need to use a telescope to project the sun onto a white screen and you should be able to see the small dot moving slowly across the sun. It will not be visible to the naked eye. On the 24th of May, Mars will be at opposition. It will be the best time to see Mars through a telescope. It will be bigger and brighter than normal and the surface will be fully illuminated by the sun. You need to have a large telescope to see the dark areas and make out any details like the polar caps. On June 3rd, Saturn will be in opposition. It will be the best time to see Saturn and its rings. It will be due south at midnight and bigger and brighter than we normally see it. This opposition is a particularly good time to see the rings because they are tilted towards us by about 25 degrees and should look something like this. On July 4th the Earth is at its furthest point from the Sun. At that time it will be 94.5 million miles away just the exact opposite of what we saw on the 2nd of January. So we'll be getting about 3.5% less energy from the Sun than we do on average. So over this 6 month period that represents a 7% swing in the amount of energy we're getting from the Sun. To 
put that in perspective, that is 70 times more in those six months than we get from the change in the solar cycle over an 11 year period. On the 28th of July, we have the Delta Aquarids. You can get 15 to 20 meteors per hour from this particular shower. This is a peculiar shower in that it can go on for several weeks. It also is best seen from the southern hemisphere. It is debris from comet 96P Machholz. It's also quite favorable in the fact that it's a waning crescent moon. On the 13th of August, we have the Perseid meteors. This is a very active shower and you get over 50 meteors per hour from it. Best seen just after midnight and is debris from Comet Swift Tuttle. The only fly in this particular ointment is that we have a full moon, so it won't be very favorable for observing them. On the 27th of August, we have a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. The conjunction occurs when two planets appear very close together in the sky, even though in reality they aren't very close together. This conjunction will be quite spectacular. The two planets will only be 0 0.06 degrees apart, that's about a tenth of the diameter of the moon. The way to observe it is to look west just after sunset, and you'll see the two bright planets there. Venus will be the brighter of the two, and Jupiter will be the uh, other one. On the 1st of September, we have an annular solar eclipse. This will be visible from Africa, and you can see the path of totality uh, across the continent shown here in red. It will last for about three hours from 7.30 to 10.30 UT. Now what causes an annular solar eclipse as opposed to a total solar eclipse? Well it's very simple in that the moon is further away than normal uh, and therefore the moon's shadow doesn't quite reach the earth. So we see a ring of the sun around the, the uh, body of the moon. Here we have that pairing again because just a couple weeks after the solar eclipse we have a lunar eclipse. Again this is going to be a penumbral eclipse and it's going to be visible through most of Europe, Asia and Africa. On December 13th we have the Gemini meteor shower. This is again one of the very active meteor showers and you can get 75 meteors per hour or more. It's best seen after midnight its radiant point is just above Castor. Many of the Gemini meteors are bright meteors and they come often in little spurts. Unfortunately again We've been very unlucky this year with our major meteor showers. We're going to have a full moon. So that will make it such a very good uh, meteor shower to watch. One of the fun things about astronomy is not necessarily looking at these set events that we know are going to happen, but waiting for the unexpected. For example, in this coming year, we might expect to get some big solar flares. It's often the case during the decay phase of a solar cycle, you get some very large solar flares. As a result of a large solar flare and or a coronal mass ejection, we might get a spectacular geomagnetic storm. I know we're not being very lucky with our meteors this year, but at any time we could see a fireball. I've never actually seen a fireball, though I did hear one. If one passes overhead, you'll hear a double sonic boom. Who knows, we may be very lucky and get one of these spectacular naked eye comets. And there's always a chance of a nova or perhaps even a supernova becoming visible to the naked eye. It's these sort of exciting events that are unexpected that makes astronomy so much fun and makes science so much fun. Many people do not know that the US ranks 37th in math and science in the world. In fact, we're losing our scientific advantage because of the poor scientific literacy of our population. That means our leaders do not make good decisions about science. We need to change that. Perhaps we should be considering giving gifts of science. You can get near real-time science updates on Twitter if you follow my channel, DRK Strong. That's it for today. In fact, that's it for 2015. I'll see you next year. If you like this video, please feel free to pass it on to your friends, neighbors, relations, any high school kids who are interested in science and young people at college. Who knows, we may have a budding Einstein amongst them.